uh, with you today. Um, yeah, I, as Anya said, I am CEO and co-founder of Vertical Harvest of Jackson Hole. Um, and I, we are very excited for Maine to be um, the first of our prototype farms that we're going to be expanding. Um, but so today I wanted to show you um, what that farm looks like and what the implications are. So I'm going to put together a short here or share with you a short presentation. So please let me know uh, if you can see the screen. Okay, can you see these slides? Yep, we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to play from the start here. Now, do you see um, the slides in full or do you see the whole presentation? Um, we're not seeing it in full. We're seeing the, we're okay. split up between the So, hold yeah. on a second, let me. What I'll do is do this opposite. Sorry. Okay. 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 Can you see the whole slide now? Uh, my Zoom just... Here, I'll just make it big. All right, can you just see that? We'll just do it this way. Sorry, my Zoom froze and then crashed. Oh no, um, okay. So um, we can see your presentation, so okay, perfect. it doesn't need to be full screen. That's fine. Yeah, let's just move forward with this. So, um, so I, as, as we mentioned, I'm an architect and entrepreneur, and I've always believed that architecture can be a powerful vehicle for change. So it's with this belief that 10 years ago, following my passion for food and experiences growing up with a brother with disabilities, that I, along with a talented group of professionals, began building a business to address key issues in our community in Wyoming. We were dedicated to the notion that sustainable communities are successful ones. And so our mission started with a simple mandate, responsibly grow as much food as possible, provide as many jobs as possible, and do both year round. This mission led us to become somewhat unexpectedly vertical farmers, designing and operating our flagship farm that you see here, the first of its kind in North America, as a three-story hydroponic greenhouse that grows 10 acres of food on a 10th of an acre. It also provides meaningful employment and career development for people with intellectual and physical disabilities. Five years into our operation, we have seen how food can have a profound impact on our community and the people in it. But what started as a grassroots effort was always couched in global issues. We were keenly aware of the United Nations warning that the world must produce 70% more food by the middle of the century. That's 15 to 30 years from now. And so it's not just about our grandkids or even our kids' lifetimes. This is our lifetime. And this year the UN has indicated we're in a code red for humanity. This is a clear challenge, but equally a profound opportunity to create new models that exist at the intersection of food security, urban redevelopment, and the environment. We see our prototype farm as a tool that has the potential to address all three. So in this respect, states are recognizing the benefits of localizing the food system. Maine has a goal of residents eating 30% locally sourced foods by 2030. This initiative not only relies on increasing the amount of food produced, but on climate smart agricultural practices that recognize the importance of working farmland protection. This effort will take targeted and fundamental changes to the food system, including increased investment and alternative approaches. It's high time for point solutions to give way to systemic and resilient ones. Point solutions alleviate symptoms 
but don't address root causes. They can only solve one problem at a time. And with our model, we have an opportunity to utilize food to solve multiple problems simultaneously. And if we don't address root causes, we won't be able to stop the collapse of our natural and social systems. Even consumers understand that social and environmental issues are linked and that as the 17 sustainable development goals that the UN has released indicate to make any kind of real headway, you have to design solutions that make progress against multiple challenges simultaneously. To that end, food is the strongest connection to human and environmental health. And we believe that food will be the defining issue of the 21st century. The last year has exposed how fraught and fragile our food system is. We are in need of a great food transformation, but there are no silver bullet solutions. This transformation will not happen without widespread multi-sector, multi-level action that leverages innovation for system systemic change. CEA or Controlled Environment Agriculture is one of these innovations. CEA is agriculture that cultivates crops in an enclosed environment. It allows for optimized growing conditions, incredible efficiency with valuable resources like water and land, is less harmful with reduced fertilizers and pesticides with no runoff, and critically, allows farmers to grow anywhere. And vertical CEA allows us to optimize how much food we can grow in limited areas. By going up, we're increasing valuable available surface area for cultivation. These are the fundamentals of the CEA industry today. But we believe that it is in the promise of scale that will en enable CEA to contribute to a substantial realignment of food system priorities and move the industry beyond a point solution. Let me be very clear here. CEA will never replace traditional farming, but it can bolster the local food economy in vital ways. If we create a network of farms that bolster local food economies at scale, we can then participate in the creation of a fair and sustainable food system. At scale, we can pursue creative partnerships across business, policy, and science to spur action for change and increase food access. And at scale, we can reconnect our cities with food, quality food that is grown, processed, and distributed within our communities. Which is why at Vertical Harvest, our mission is a bold and audacious one, to help the planet, people, and public grow well. We grow better food and futures, where food becomes our medium to make positive change. Whereas before Vertical Harvest, our unexpected farmers were bagging groceries and washing dishes, now we all have to start somewhere. But now they are leaders and trailblazers in the fast-growing green CEA industry. This opportunity has created a sea change of perception of what this population is able to do. For example, meet Sean on the left, who spent most of his life uh, washing dishes, but now has advanced to a facilities engineer with unique knowledge in a nascent and growing industry. Nikki in the middle uh, has been on 20 panels in the last year talking about uh, disability advocacy um, and our documentary covering our first 15 months of operation. And Michelle, who worked 20 years in the back of a kitchen, now heads our lettuce growing department. This has not only facilitated immense prof per professional growth for these individuals, but personal and community growth leading to increased independence. This is how Vertical Harvest is creating smarter, greener, and more equitable farms. And at the same time, we are showing that they can be profitable. In fact, it's because of this very balance that they are profitable. Our model locates farms on underutilized lands in urban neighborhoods to maximize impact. We hire from underrepresented communities who struggle to find consistent employment at a livable wage. We grow superior produce locally, distributed from farm, farm to fork within 24 hours at the peak of its nutritional and taste value. And we're also creating a new type of civic building, valued like a public library or community center, one that's a reflection of a community's values and responsive to its needs and wants. So driven by our social impact, 
we are building a new type of mission critical community infrastructure, infrastructure in both of the hard physical assets, the buildings, the growing systems, the technology, and the soft infrastructure of social work, community and population health, green job training, shoring up local food supply chains and bolstering the entire local food system to become resilient. And you may have seen our plans for Westbrook, Maine, initiated as a public-private partnership with the city and state agencies. Maine, like Wyoming, has a very short growing season and imports 95% of its food. On a surface parking lot, we have developed a master plan that co-locates our farm with workforce housing, retail, and public amenities, creating partnerships that tailor developments to what the community needs. Thanks to the leadership of Mayor Mike and their dedicated team, what has begun in Maine will be a process that will initiate in every development we build because we're building our farms to function as a community hub because food is the nexus for about just about everything we truly value. And so we are, as we discussed earlier, by focusing on systems and relationships to address root causes, you can start to see how our farm can be the answer. We, sorry, <laughs> we grow a diversity of crops with a range of price points to work with a range of sales channels. This is our distinct value proposition. In ad addition to retail and food service restaurants, we work with local institutions, school districts, hospitals, nursing homes, college campuses, selling them our produce and building relationships to help solve challenges around food insecurity and nutrition. In Maine, before we have even broken ground, we have developed important relationships with native Maine, Hannaford's and Sendexo. We're excited to work with local organizations steeped in food access like Full Plates, Full Potential. Our customers have mandates to purchase local, and we can respond to that mandate at scale. The possibilities within this system are infinite. And with a diversity of crops, we can tailor to nutritional and cultural needs of each farm's region. With our direct consumer program, our farm share can be daily medicine with a produce prescription from your doctor or you can sign up for a box that supports a climatarian diet, or we can accept SNAP to maximize the value a family receives from their benefits. And we're just getting started. As Anya said, we have a plan to build 10 farms in the next five years. There are over 800 distressed urban neighborhoods and over 300 secondary cities with low access challenges like food deserts. Situating farms in these locations means energy is cheaper, cleaner, and more accessible. The labor pool is larger, and we have access to public-private partnerships that make financing for these projects efficient. This is a win-win for municipal leaders. Our goal is to create a network of farms that serve locally, support regionally, and scale nationally to maximize our potential impact. So we know being um, a successful business in the 21st century will mean embracing the complexity of multiple sustainable development goals and the pressures of the day. We'll need metrics to create a model to fulfill the true process of social impact financing and to be able to properly serve communities. So we are um, working with partnerships as I described today to create a solution to our um, converging economic, climate, and health crises that are rooted in people's access to healthy food, resilient nursing jobs, and fair housing. We're incredibly honored to be launching this effort in one of Maine's home cities, and we're, I'm very excited to take your questions today and to have a discussion about what we're planning for your state. So thank you very much for your time and your interest, and I look forward to, to talking with you all. Thank you, Nona. Um, trying to get my full screen here. Um, so I'll go ahead and start off with a question. Um, just want to clarify about the Westbrook project. So you guys are building a whole building for that. Is that right? Yes, okay. it's a new build and it's part of a master plan that has a, a parking structure that the city wanted. Um, so with our developer partner, we created a master plan that 
co-locate civic infrastructure. So, you know, we see the farm as critical civic infrastructure. And so it co-locates with the, the parking as well as the workforce, workforce housing, which is a really important aspect of our plan. Okay, interesting. Um, did they have to change any zoning or anything to, to let no. that go through? No. Yeah, no. So I'm an architect by trade. The zoning, you know, uh, is something I deal with on an everyday basis, which is actually pretty unique about um, our brand and the way that we're doing this. The vertical farming world um, it is is kind of filled with technologists, which is awesome. But I think that the, you know, urban planning approach that we've taken is helping um, us learn how to situate the farm within the existing zoning rules. And actually, you know, building departments are working with us to make sure that we can achieve this type of building within the, you know, codes that are in existence. But that's something that we we are are very well versed in and, and, and can figure out our model to adapt to what's in existence already. Okay, cool. Um, kind of Going back to, we had a, our first lecture was about bird safe building design. So <laughs> um, I just noticed that with the building in Westbrook, Maine, that was a lot of glass on the building. So yeah. I was curious if that was taken into account with that. Well, we have not had any problems in, in Jackson Hole with the birds. That was a big, big concern for um, our community as well. Um, I think that we share our love for our natural environment um, here in Wyoming, just as you do in Maine. And I think one of the reasons for that is the activity of the plants behind the glass is something that seems to, you know, replicate some of the films that we use to deter, you know, bird accidents. And so uh, that has worked for us. That was kind of our, our concept here in Jackson and it has worked for us. We have not seen one bird death due to vertical harvest. So that is really encouraging for us. Okay, cool. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, does anybody have any thoughts about how this could work in Bangor, this type of model. Anne, did you want to say something? Yeah, I did. Hi. I just wanted to add that, um, or ask actually, when you integrated with municipalities, I mean, obviously you had to be working on the project at, the, at its infancy. So how did you... How did you originally make that connection? So um, our developer partner, uh, TDB, had a relationship with um, Dan Stevenson, who's the economic, um, um, oh, goodness, what's wrong with me right now? He handles the economic the commerce That's department. It. Yeah. <laughs> We're all so related. <laughs> so you know it was it was the relationship that we had with our developer partner who introduced us to the city and the city as I said you know what's there's there's really not much to argue with when you're saying okay I can bolster the local food economy here we can and we're also creating jobs that'll stay in the community um, and that's just we're just skimming the surface of the impact that we'll have on the community um, you know not even touching public health um, you know, social justice issues, the needs of each community. And so it becomes a really compelling um, development for municipal leaders who are looking at, um, at how to enhance, you know, economic resiliency within their communities, um, because it is such an architectural urban planning approach. So it's, it, we're speaking the same language as municipal leaders. And so it becomes a really easy sell. Um, and I think that's why, you know, Vertical Harvest has been able to uh, create relationships with municipal leaders across the country, um, because this is something that really makes sense. It's a, it's a business that is really um, focused on the same things that our municipal leaders are focused on. Yeah, that's great. What a great project. Thank yeah. you. Um, if anybody has a question, you can raise your hand. I'll click on you. Um, 
think we have any questions today. Uh, let's see. It's a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling a little brain dead myself. Um, <laughs> Anne, can you think of anything else? No, I just um, I just want to think about how we can integrate this into you know our projects here in Bangor as we move forward with municipal projects, and um, I just it's a it's just an excellent program. Well, we're very excited to share it with you. Um, we. We have been, you know, developing this um, for two years, and I think once we get this one off the ground, we have the the parts and pieces to be able to do this quickly and and really understand the fine from the financing to the partnerships that make it successful. So we're excited to talk to you moving forward. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess we'll end it there since we don't have any more questions. So. Um, thank you, Nona, for doing yeah. that, for doing the presentations. Well, it, my pleasure. And it's really great to meet you all. And, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye.